The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for the 45-minute homily. <laughs> Don't laugh. Anyway, you ever have a bad day once or twice? I've had more than once or twice. But the reality is, when we have bad days or everything else, and we're focusing on ourselves, the way to get out of it, the way to get out of people if you have depression or different things, is to enter into God's presence. And we come into his presence and let his word speak to us. His word isn't just a history book, is it, about something that happened 2,000 years ago. His word is Jesus Christ who's alive and has the power to change our hearts and our lives, correct? Once I was having a bad day, and I was at, you know, years ago, and I was at my parish, and I was just oh, horrible inside. And so I went and I fell before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament in the tabernacle. And it was like 1 o'clock in the morning, and I'm just laying there saying, Lord, I'm broken. And then I had the Word of God, which is always important to have the Word of God with you. And I opened up the Word of God, and it came to this passage. Do not let your heart be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith in me. Instantly, I had peace. Instantly. Because, again, it was Jesus speaking to me at this very moment. And it was like he took his hand and reached into my heart and changed it. So when you and I focus, again, think about it. When we have our bad days or different things, it's because we're focusing on ourselves, we're focusing on things or a thing that went wrong, right? A hundred thousand good things could happen to us today. But one thing happens and the devil pushes that. And we keep saying, oh yeah, no, no, no. We go, and we feel depressed and everything else. And Jesus says, hey, come here, look at me. See, the devil keeps us focused on ourselves and our past. Jesus says, you look at me, and you look at the future. The past is past. Now, of course, if you have sin that needs to be confessed, you need to confess it. But once you confess the sin, let it go. Remember that glorious story of um, St. Margaret Mary? And she was having, today is First Friday, right? Isn't it First Friday? Yes. And so is Margaret Mary at the First Friday devotions, and she has the experience of Jesus. And as she has the experience of Jesus, he says, okay, I want devotion started to my heart. And so she goes to the bishop, and the bishop thought she was a, a nut. And so he says, go back. And so he goes back, and she says, if you're seeing Jesus, if you're actually seeing Jesus, you tell Jesus to tell you what my last confession was about. Okay. So St. Margaret Mary went to Jesus and said, Jesus, I know what he wants. You go back and tell him, I forgot. And so that's what Jesus does. When he forgives us and covers us, with his own blood, spilled at Calvary. He lets our past be past. And we need to let our past be past too, correct? Because again, if we keep staying and looking there and looking at our past, Jesus, the devil's robbing us of our future and how we can be joyful in living his presence and living what he wants us to do, but we keep staying focused. Now, the best example of that, of course, is St. Peter, right? St. Peter, as long as he was looking at Jesus, he could walk on water, right? There he is walking on some water, but then all of a sudden he realized, hey, there's a storm going on around me. Or, or hey, I, I can't walk on water, I'm just a man, and a sinful man at that. And as soon as he started looking at himself and looking, or maybe I should get back in the boat, or looking at the past, or looking at the storm, what happened? He fell. And how did he get pulled back up? Jesus, help me. He looked at Jesus, and Jesus helped him. So too with our walk in the spiritual life. We need to be focused on Jesus and the future. 
He tells us today, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. The world, the flesh, and the devil says anything but Jesus. We have to say, only Jesus. Only Jesus is who we keep our eyes on. Only Jesus is who we walk towards. Only Jesus will make us holy. Again, Christianity is the forgetfulness of self, not the focus on self. We focus on Jesus. And as we stay focused and we start doing his will and where people come spend time in prayer, that's why, again, as we were talking, as I was here last night, you know, uh, taping some things, I said, listen, the number one thing a Christian does, the only thing, the most important thing all of us does do is pray. And not just saying a bunch of words to a God who may or may not be up there, but entering into relationship with a God who loves us. Huh? You know, all the ministry of Jesus Christ began in Mark chapter 1, verse 11. You can all remember that, right? Mark 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1. Mark 1, 1, 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 11. The whole ministry began, and we hear this in the first reading today. The whole ministry of Jesus began when God the Father, at his baptism, the sky opens up and the Spirit comes down upon Jesus, and God the Father says, you are my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Huh? You do realize, because that happens to Jesus, and we are in Jesus, the day you and I are baptized, what happened the day you got baptized? Well, we got cleansed of original sin, yes. We became members of the church, yes. We became temples of the living God, yes. What else happened to you the day you got baptized? You were adopted by God and you became God's beloved son, and you became God's beloved daughter because of Jesus Christ. When God looks at you and me, he smiles. God is not to get us, he's out to love us. You and I, because of Jesus Christ, are beloved to our Father. Have you ever experienced when you go to pray? You know, most people when they go to pray, they think, well, God's kind of mad at me because, you know, I'm not perfect. And because God's mad at me, I disappoint him all the time. And, you know, and I am a great sinner. And that's all very true. We're all great sinners. And yet God knew that before we were created. And he still created us. And he still sent his son to die for your sins and my sins. And so now when he looks at us, when we have a repentant heart and we're coming before him, he says, like, you know, what do you think prayer is? I love to tell what prayer is, is going into the arms of your father and letting your father embrace you. He says, come here, you, come here. Would you just let me hold you for a while? Would you just let me be your dad for a while? Again, the scripture says that the spirit inside of us cries out what? Abba. Father, you know what, Abba is the most intimate words that we could say to our God. You know, and that's what Jesus taught us to say to our God. He says, the spirit inside of us cries out, Abba. And that means, you know, it's like the, the first words a baby says, right? The first words, uh, like the Hebrew children, they would hear Abba. We would hear, depending if you're a male or a woman, a mother or a father, we hear those first syllables out of a baby's mouth as Mama or Dada. It all depends who, if you're the mom or the dad. He said dad, dad. No, 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 he said mama, whatever it is. It's that intimacy that we have with Almighty God. So when the when last time you prayed, a couple minutes ago, when you pray, when I pray, do we pray in relationship? Do we pray to the God of the universe and start off the way Jesus said, our Father? Do we say, Abba, Papa? Is that kind of intimacy you and I have with our dad? That the God of the universe is our dad. He adopted us. He wants us to be beloved to him. And when you and I see prayer is going to be with our dad, our father, then we will run to prayer. Because the deepest need in all of our hearts is very simple. What is it? To be loved. That's all anybody wants. I don't care how tough you are, how smart you are, when it comes right down to it, heart to heart, the only thing any of us want is to be loved. And that's where God meets us. And he loves us. And when you and I come to experience this love, then we can pour love out to others. Huh? We just pour it out. 
But often, if we don't think we're good enough and we don't think God loves us and we don't think, you know, I'm no, then we're going to be that way with other people. No one's ever going to be good enough. We're always going to be judgmental. We're always going to be sitting there thinking about what, how good they're not instead of what good they are. I know there's a great book out by Monsignor Leo Mossenberg on Mother Teresa, just called Mother Teresa. Huh? And it was great. He tells the stories. He spent a lot of time with Mother Teresa. And he said that Mother was talking to him and talking to the nuns. And one of the things she says, she says, you know, one of the things that I've never had to confess my whole life is that I judged anybody. And I thought, oh, I'm going to hell. There's no way out of it. Could you imagine mother said she never, ever, ever, her whole life, ever, ever confessed that she ever judged anybody. And when Monsignor looked at her and says, really, mother, you've never judged anybody? And she says, no, because if you judge people, you can't, there's no room to, ju to love them. If you judge them, there's no room to love them. Huh? And so mother came to know in an early part of her life that she was loved by the God of the universe. Now, in 50 years, she only had five weeks of consolation. So she had to cling to that reality that she was beloved to the Father, even when she didn't feel it. But then everyone she met, she became an instrument of that love to others. So if Mother Teresa could say that, is that something we could strive for? That from this moment forth, that we try with all our hearts to not judge anyone because there's no room to love them. And when you and I become these type of people, the only way we're going to get there is when we know that when God looks at us, he looks with us at love. When he looks at us, he says, do not let your heart be troubled. How often when we go to God is our hearts trouble? Lots, isn't it? Huh? Sometimes we're like these children, gimme, 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 I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need. And our hearts are filled with trouble. And he says, shh, shh, let not your heart be troubled. You're my beloved daughter. You're my beloved son. Come here. Let me hold you for a while. So I encourage you. We all need to say our prayers. Every day when I do my holy hour, I always say a rosary every day. The mother of God leaves heaven and says, say a rosary, especially this month of May. What are you going to do? Say a rosary every day, right? If you're one of those people that say, oh, I don't really say, I say a rosary sometimes. Stop it. You say a rosary every day. Huh? And then Divine Mercy Chaplet right? Because it's a great thing. We all need mercy. And so you do those things. But then, remember the Baltimore Catechism? I know some of you know it. It says, who made me? God made me. Why did God make me? God made me to know him, love him, and serve him in this world so I can be happy with him forever and the next. Well, how do I get to know God? Psalm 46, verse 10 or 11, depending on your <laughs> translation of the scripture, says, be still. So if you and I are going to come to know that we are beloved and know that our hearts can't be troubled and know that we are sons and daughters of the Father in Jesus Christ, then in our prayer time, we need time for stillness. What stillness mean? That we shut up. Huh? We shut up in prayer. And we let God speak to us. We have silence. Huh? In my adoration chapel, I'm the only one who dies of severe perpetual adoration. We have over 650 people there a week. And they said, Father, what am I going to do when I go in front of Jesus? I say, shut up and know that he is God. But I couldn't put that on the wall. So on the wall, I have, be still and know that I am God. Just be with Jesus. So today, as we come before our Lord, he wants you and I to know that we are beloved to him. He wants you and I to know that so much that we become his presence in the world to others so that other people become beloved to us. There's no room for us to judge them because we're here to love them, just like God does. We judge deeds and that, of course, just like God judges deeds, but we love people. That shows a person is truly in Christ is when they become love in the world. And we can't become love in the world unless we know we're loved. And that's why it's so important every day 
be still. Know that he is God. Know that you are beloved. And you and I don't have to go any, go through anything alone. He's with us because he is the way, the truth, and the life. You got it? Get it? Going to live it? You better. May each of you know his love today and forever. Amen.